Hello viewers, welcome to Barrel Brothers. Today we're doing something uh, a little bit different. And we'll sort of take you through what you need to, when you're, when you're making a cap, or when we're making a cap, um, center cuts or wheels. First of all, the first thing you need is $10,000 worth of flashing injection mold. But once you've got that, then you've got to go make parts for quite some time before you pay the thing off. But what I thought I'd show you today is the go to woe of how we actually make them. As you've seen, we've come up with zip in stock. Ah, oh, shit. So we need to make some in this here DMAG. There you go, mate. Oh, oh. And we're, we're making things hard for ourselves because the uh, previous machine that we ran it in died and we got rid of it. Uh, now I've got a similar machine over here, but it's um, it's doing a job that's gonna be in there for ages. So we're gonna try it in our 80 ton DMAG, which we haven't run it in here before. So a uh, couple of good things is we've still got the, the program from the other machine. So that'll give us some idea of um, cycle time and uh, barrel temperatures, that sort of stuff. Uh, and the good thing about this, now this has got a high density polyethylene, which is very benign material, so um, it shouldn't be too hard to clean out the barrel and everything. And that's the trick. First thing you start, you've got to, when you're doing plastic injection molding, you've got to start with the materials. So you start with, you actually start with the information. So we've got our information here. We know what the job, what the job is. We know how many we've got to make. Um, do my QC sheet, you would have seen me write a QC sheet down over there. And then we follow the material, which starts by cleaning the hopper, making sure there's nothing in there because we don't want to contaminate the new material going in. And then it goes down and we've got to clean the barrel out. And then from that point where, uh, the, while that barrel's coming to temperature, the temperature that we're after, that's when we take the, uh, the old dye out and uh, put the new dye in and set it all up. So here we go. Juruma. This is the good stuff. Vacuum pack. Black unfilled nylon six. Basically a nylon six with with some good carbon black in it. That's the black stuff you can see. No idea what the white stuff is. Uh, white stuff's a UV stabilizer. So yeah, see these little white ones here. And the black ones are the carbon black. We use a really good carbon black in there. Durham is an Australian company. Makes stuff a couple of kilos that way. All right, let's get it in the hopper. With nylon, this can get real static. It's zap you on the way through. You see, this has got a, a copper through here. It tends to ground it out, but defeats the purpose when we've got a plastic bin that we're sucking it out of. So it can give you a real good spark static spark. So that's sucking it up into the little hopper up the top and then dropping it down into the big hopper here which we're just about to turn on the dryer. Uh, should be 82. So that needs to dry for a couple of hours before we can start. That's why it's the first thing we do. Always hard to get that last little bit out. It's very static and stuck to the bin. Okay. Doesn't want to suck it up. So material is drying. 
so while it does that we'll do the dye change so we've got a little bit of time up our sleeve because this is going to take a couple of hours for that to dry out correctly this is the SSR center cap so that's the one going into the machine So there's our die in the machine. Uh, we've made it our job hard because we don't have a program for this particular machine for that job. So I've got to make it up as we go along. So the, the trick is going to be, I know a cycle time. I've put some temperatures in already, as you can see, um, for the nylon. Uh, it's, all, it's all the other stuff, you know, I've, I've got to figure out. I think what we'll do is we might have a look at the program at the other uh, program. We actually don't have a written program for this machine. We've got a little 50 ton boy over here um, but it's running something else at the moment so we kind of need to stop it and then load up the program for this um, jot down some details in you know, injection times and cooling times and that sort of thing and then um, go from there but yeah <laughs> in the meantime I'm going to have a go at uh, getting some Closing and opening data, as you can see, we don't have a lot of gap here at the moment. We don't have a heap of pullback, so um, she's a big, big tool for a very small part. It's got slides on the one, two, three, four, which you'll see that when I open it. This is my actual job. This is the fun stuff, making stuff up. And this is what uh, 10 grand bought you about five years ago. You wouldn't get that, that for this now. Yeah. Our core. These are the four slides as, as the die closes. They come up against these pins and that slides these slides inwards and that's what gives us our um, our clips down the bottom and the shape up the top is all in here if you can see that oh, it's a bit, uh, how about from over there there's the shape and we run it all in through a hot sprue which is a uh, like a barrel extension that goes all the way into the die. So that's got to be heated up too. This is also what we call a spaghetti tool because there's just water everywhere on it. We have to run uh, hot water. The die actually has to be about 60 degrees to give us a really good finish. Um, if you notice that that uh, finish here, there's actually a, a finish on it. We, we copied an original old SSR cap to get the same sort of finish on it. And um, that's what we've achieved. So to get, but to get the plastic to actually flow into there, we've got to run the die at a temperature. So yeah, going to spaghetti tools, water everywhere on this. Because we're running one water heater, it's got to loop through the whole tool. So as you can see, there's in out here, there's nothing down the bottom, something over the other side, but there's in out here, top, the other side, they're just water everywhere. Let's go and have a look at the other side of it. Here's our water heater here this guy here so we're going to plug this in plug this guy in and um, it'll have cool water running into it you know from our from our chiller system which is that thing over there and then uh, yeah as you can see look brrr and brrr here um, we don't use the slides on this because there's not enough like we, we're not too worried about the finish on the uh, where the clips are down the bottom that that works fine but uh, this side here and through the core, we want the core um, at, at 60 degrees and we want this side at 60 degrees so we can get that finish on the inside that I spoke about. Complicated, ain't it? And that's the thing about nylon too. So we have to dry our material out. So it's got to be really dry when we mold it um, and it molds into the part itself. But uh, nylon six takes, if you, I mean, you can, it sucks in moisture from the atmosphere and that's when it when it's strong if you just take it straight out of the machine it's i mean it's not brittle you can jump on these bloody things but that it becomes stronger over time usually it takes about two weeks just from the humidity and the air to actually suck into the part um, or you can boil them in an hour or you can soak them in water we just put them in a box because we we don't use them that quickly i mean they're strong enough anyway so yeah 
but that's one of the vagaries of nylon it's a bit of a pain to mold it's tricky this is why we call it a spaghetti tool so water in loops around out loops back in again loops back out over to the other side loops out into there and then back into the water heater here's a bit where we've cleaned out the high density polyethylene that was in the barrel and as you can see it's slowly gone over to the nylon then uh, this is the the new material as it's gone through that's still a bit hot so yeah looks like somebody's brains have fallen out doesn't it alrighty so after a fair bit of mucking around uh, during which one of our hot sprues what's a hot sprue that's the hot part it's, it's actually like an extension of the barrel that's built into the um, sprue side of the die so it doesn't have a sprue what's a sprue uh, this is a sprue that normally materials fed into there and then the, it goes into the part through this but this this one doesn't have it we made a total of two rejects so we're doing pretty well as you can see that one's fairly crappy but um, it feeds directly into the part itself. The reason that looks crappy is one of our thermocouples had died. So we're running this one on a percentage and this one on a temperature. So yeah, and now we are making parts, as you'll see very shortly, in 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Here we are down here. This is the one we've just made. That's pretty hot coming out of the machine, but there you go. Yeah. Same finish, same shape, and, and uh, same clip system as the original. Uh, yeah, we're pretty proud of this actually. That one's got a little mark there. I don't know what that is. But yeah, we go through these, and if they have little marks or anything on them, we, they get binned. And uh, that, my friends, is how you make a Santa cap with the plastic injection molder. Thanks for watching Barrel Brothers and we'll see you next time.